you might be wondering what you're looking at. And what these are, are some funky shapes that I have generated using a G-code generator for my 3D printer. And that generator, I wrote all the code for it in C++ as a little project to learn coding. And this video will just be a quick run through of everything I've did over Christmas break with this program. So for my example, I will just generate these four objects that I randomly came up with here on this sheet of paper. Just a very simple cube. This is a pentagon on the top and bottom that is connected with a height. This is a simple cylinder. And then this will be a pyramid with a four-sided base that comes to a point at the top. So here we are in the code that I have written for this G-code generator. And before I go into any detail, let's just generate those objects that I talked about in the previous shot. So I click here to run the program. And the first decision to make is what type of material we'd like to print with. And I have PLA in my printer right now. So I'll enter zero for that. And then file name, let's just do object test. So now that the setup is complete, these are all of our settings. And for this original test, I probably won't alter any of these, but the functionality of this generator is you can change the infill, layer height, line width, if you put a larger or smaller nozzle on it, however many line counts you want, bottom and top layers, and then just print speeds for different parts of the print. I'm just gonna leave it with the presets for this first demo. And we're going to create some objects. So I'm going to hit two and enter. So the first object, I want a simple box. So zero, enter. And this box will be a simple cube. Let's say, let's make it 15 by 15 by 15 millimeters. And you can change the dimensions however you want. You can change those dimensions however you want to make a really long box, a really wide box, any dimensions you want, but I'm just gonna do 15 by 15 by 15, and then where you want it on your print bed. And I'm just gonna put this box at 25X, 25Y. So we're not gonna do any more customizations on this object, so finish the object. And then it'll show you all the objects that are currently in your file. So we've only made one so far, so we're gonna make a couple more. We're just gonna do a simple pentagon, which is a five-sided polygon. Let's just do another 15 um, millimeter object and height. Let's make this one 15 again, just so it matches the box. And I'll locate this one at 2570. And finish the object, and now we have Two that we've created. Now, thirdly, I was just going to make a cylinder. So, a cylinder is just any any shape basically with a round bottom or top is in the cylinder category in this code. So, cylinder, we're just going to keep everything consistent. So, 15 inch diam, 15 millimeter diameter, 15 millimeter height, and we'll include this one at 25, 125. Let's say and finish that object. And then finally, I was gonna make a pyramid. So to generate a pyramid, we're gonna have a pyramid with a four-sided base, which would be a box. Could also do this with a four-sided polygon, but I'm gonna use the box part of the code. Width of the shape, we'll keep it 15, 15 again. Height, might as well just keep everything consistent. And where we want it, we're gonna do 25, 175, let's say. Now here's where we're gonna do some additional manipulation of this object. We're gonna customize top layer dimensions, which is two, so I'm gonna enter two. And desired top width, we want it to be a perfect pyramid. So that means the very top layer will be coming to a point. So zero millimeters wide and zero millimeters long at the top. We finish building that shape with a zero. And now we've got the four objects here, which are the exact same objects 
which I showed previously on that piece of paper. So to generate the code, I'm gonna hit zero and hit enter. And you can see that generated super fast. It tells you how much filament you need to complete the print. And then that's all. So I'm gonna hit enter to escape out of the program. And now I'm gonna go, this is the file folder. So this right here is the application that I'm running. If you were to have it saved on your computer, the file would be generated into this folder. But since I'm running it in code blocks, the file generated here, not super important. But you can see Ender 3 Pro, which is the type of printer it's configured for. PLA is the filament that it's gonna be printing and then the name. And then if I pull up these properties, you'll see it's a G code file. This was generated by the program. And if you double click it, you can see these are all comments in G code, a semicolon precedes a comment. So it shows the four objects and all the settings. And then there's some setup commands just to get the printer heated up to the correct temperature, get filament extruding and everything ready to go. And then it goes into the printing and all the code is very uh, neatly organized. So you can go in and see exactly what's being generated. It just generates it line by line. And let's see how many lines. That's about a 30,000 line code. And that was all generated in a matter of minutes using my program. No need to create an STL file and then use a slicer to convert it into a 3D printable file. This is generated specifically for 3D printing. And then just some finishing commands. So I'm gonna throw these onto a SD card and plug them into my 3D printer and let's see what the final products look like. I just got done moving back down to college, so please excuse where I have my printer. It's just on a table in the basement of my college house. So I inserted the card. Let me get that focused. Print from, and right here, the object text. As simple as that, the printer is reading the file that was generated. There's the presets for PLA, and let's wait for it to start printing. Here's a quick shot of the infill. You can see no matter what shape you're printing, the infill is perfectly generated. So here the objects are next to the original drawings I'd made of them. And as you can see, they came out exactly as they were input into the program. And then just to add to those, a few of the other irregular shapes I made previously. And so now we can see that this program can generate a vast array of different types of shapes. But the question remains, is there any useful functionality of this program? So next I will generate a useful shape. So for the final example of this video, let's 3D print a glass just like this one using my G-code generator. Firstly, we will measure the dimensions of it. 60 millimeter diameter at the base. I measured the height at about 16 centimeters or 160 millimeters. And finally, the top outer diameter is 90 millimeters. So let's create an object in the program with these dimensions. So now I'll give a very basic overview of the code. I'm not gonna go super in depth in it because there's a lot of changes I still wanna make. I think it can really be optimized now that I know what I'm doing. And I'm not super proud of this final product. Uh, plus there's about 2000 lines of code. So I'm not gonna go through all of those in this video. But here I just opened up the CPP file for, for the generator. And this function here that generates the code, this is what runs at the very end of the program to actually output the file. So looking down here, you can see there's this big while loop and it basically at the bottom of the while loop, it adds one more layer each time. And the program knows how many total layers there are gonna be for all of your objects. And it just keeps 
generating layer after layer. And right here, there's this shape object array right here. And that includes all the shapes that you make, whether it's just one that you want to print in the file or hundreds. And this for loop goes through all of those one by one and prints each layer. Pretty simple when you dump it all down to that. Now, a lot of trigonometry and class variables are used to make all the code. And I'm not going to go through all that because it's quite confusing. But at the end of the day, it's outputting a file. So let's make that cup, like I said. So I'm going to run the program here. And now you can see my face. And we're going to be printing it for PLA again. And file name, let's just do cup. Now we're going to change some of these settings. The infill, like you saw before, was at 20%. But this cup's going to be empty. So we're going to change that infill percent to zero. And now other changes we need to make. There's no top on the cup. Otherwise, it'll be hollow with the top, and you won't be able to drink out of it. So we're going to make zero top layers. And then let's just add one more bottom layer just to make sure it's watertight. And then let's say we want to make it print a little faster. We'll change the outer wall print speed. Uh, 35 millimeters per second, the inner all print speed to 65. Now it should just print a little faster and we'll leave the bottom slow still. So now we're just going to create the one object, two. And this is going to be a cylinder because it's a round cup. The diameter, like we calculated already, 60 millimeters. Height, 160 millimeters. And let's just put it in the middle of the print bed. And now we are going to customize top layer dimensions because the cup gets slightly wider as it goes up. So I'm going to click two here to customize the top layer dimensions. And the top diameter is 90. That's all. So you can see the shape right here. These dimensions should describe the cup that we're trying to print. And without further ado, I'll just generate the code. The, air, the bar is going and it's generated. We're going to need about 20 meters of filament. Exit out of that. And let's put it, I'll show this part. Here's the cup file. I'm going to copy that, control C. Here's my SD card, control V. Now it's on that SD drive. Let's plug it into the 3D printer and see how it turns out. Well, here we are and the print just finished. It turned out pretty nice. You can see with the circles, I'm actually just making a 60 sided polygon. And you can see all of the really tiny straight edge sides. But it turned out pretty nice. There's what it was modeled after, I'd say. That was a success. They fit together perfectly. So like I said, I'm not claiming that this program is better than something like Kira or SolidWorks, but it was a good way for me to learn about 3D printing, learn a little bit more about coding, and just wanted to make a video to document it. Thanks for watching.